Welcome to Protecting Student Records, TEA's role in complying with the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Many TEA employees have access to confidential student records. If you are one of them, you need to know your responsibility for protecting the privacy of those records. In addition to ethical considerations, there are legal obligations to protect the confidentiality of those records. In this short presentation, you will learn about best practices for collecting, storing, viewing, managing, and sharing student information. Our legal obligation is described in the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act of 1974, FERPA. It is a federal law that protects the privacy of information in students' educational records. The law applies to any educational agency or institution that receives federal funding from a program administered by the U.S. Department of Education. The agency must comply with FERPA in exchange for accepting federal funds. FERPA says that an educational agency or institution may not disclose personally identifiable information within education records to third parties without prior written consent of the parent or eligible student. The law is enforced by the Family, Policy, and Compliance Office in the U.S. Department of Education. FIPCO interprets and enforces FERPA. Until a student turns 18 years of age or enters college, the primary rights protected by FERPA are the rights of the student's parents. Parents have the right to seek to amend or change education records. They have a right to inspect and review the student's education records. And they have a right to consent to the disclosure of information from the student's education records. The student becomes eligible for protection when he or she turns 18 years old or enters a post-secondary institution. At that time, the rights of parents then transfer to the eligible student. Our responsibility is to protect student privacy when their records are in our custody. In order to do so, TEA has specific agency policies in place. It is critical that you follow these policies to ensure that students' privacy is protected. When you follow appropriate procedures, student records are protected and our agency is in compliance with FERPA. Your role is key. In order to understand your role, you need to know what are considered student records. You also need to know what type of information is considered protected information that cannot be disclosed. When people request access to FERPA protected information, you need to understand the appropriate procedures to grant access to that information. There are a number of measures you can take to ensure that you are protecting the privacy and security of confidential student information. And lastly, you need to understand how FERPA is enforced and the consequences of a potential violation. Let's talk about student records first. What are considered student records here at TEA? All records that relate to a student and are maintained by TEA or by a party acting on our behalf, such as contractors, hearing officers, or monitors, are subject to FERPA protection. Education records include records on a student, for example, receiving services under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. That means that health records maintained by TEA as part of our IDEA programs are protected by FERPA. Although HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, concerns confidentiality of information in medical records, 
HIPAA defers to FERPA for medical records that are maintained by an educational agency or institution. Student records are maintained in many different forms, whether they are handwritten, printed, typed, videotaped, audiotaped, film, microfilm, microfiche, or electronic. These records are all protected by FERPA. But please be cautious. Even if a record is not protected by FERPA, it doesn't mean that the record can be freely released. There are often other laws that may protect these records as well. When in doubt, contact TEA's confidentiality officer in our legal department. Any record that contains student personally identifiable information is subject to FERPA protection. Personally identifiable refers to information that would make the student's identity easily traceable. Examples of such records here at TEA are correspondence between parents and school districts to TEA, any hearing decisions, PEAM's non-aggregate data, and of course student test results. TEA has outlined personally identifiable information in our public information guidelines. Personally identifiable information includes the name or initials of a student, a student's parents, or of family members. It includes the student's date of birth, place of birth, the student's mother's maiden name, address and phone number of the student or student's family, a student's grade level, campus name, the names but not the titles of all district and campus personnel, the names but not the titles such as the first and last name of the student's private physician. Personal identifiers, such as student ID numbers, social security numbers, or biometric records. Personal characteristics of a student, such as handwriting or style of expression. Basically, any other information that alone or in combination is linkable to a specific student and would allow a reasonable person to be able to identify the student with reasonable certainty. All records maintained by TEA are not necessarily FERPA protected. What is not protected by FERPA? Take, for example, the certification records for a teacher who was enrolled in an educational institution. While his or her records at the educational institution are indeed FERPA protected, the certification records here at TEA are not. The educator is not considered a student for FERPA purposes here at TEA. Another example is law enforcement records of a student. If an educational agency maintains a law enforcement record in a student's file for student disciplinary purposes, then the law enforcement records are educational records and therefore protected by FERPA. However, a copy of the same records maintained by a law enforcement office unit are law enforcement records and thus not protected by FERPA. Who requests access to protected information, and how is that access granted? 
TEA receives requests for FERPA-protected information from parents as well as a variety of third parties. When a parent requests information, we need to be certain that parent is indeed identifiable. A request for records from an unidentifiable parent typically occurs when a parent has lost contact with his or her child and is seeking public school enrollment information from TEA as a means to locate that child. A parent is considered identifiable when the agency has sufficient information in its files to know that the requester is in fact the parent of the child at issue. The requester must submit extensive supporting documentation to verify that he or she still has a right of access to this child's education records. He or she must document that the parent-child relationship has not been legally severed. Next, additional documents must be submitted to identify the parent and child relationship exists such as court documents, birth certificates, social security cards, and state or federal identification. The remaining requesters are all considered third parties. They include lawyers requesting information on behalf of a parent, spouses, siblings, children, reporters, researchers, or higher education institutions. They do not have legal access to the information, so they generally require written consent from the parent or the eligible student to receive FERPA-protected information. How do we respond to requests for access? Remember that when third parties request protected information, they must include the parent or eligible student's written consent to access those records. TEA cannot disclose personally identifiable information without it. FERPA is very specific as to what must be included in the written consent. Written consent must specify the records that may be disclosed, state the purpose of the disclosure, and identify the party or class of parties to whom the disclosure may be made. Written consent is also required when a third party's special right of access is questionable, such as attorney representation. TEA not only requires third parties to verify their capacity, but also requires verification of who they say they are. There are several FERPA exceptions that permit disclosure of protected information without prior written consent. These are some of the most common examples. Without prior written consent, TEA may disclose education records to school officials where the student is currently enrolled with legitimate educational interests as defined by the school. A school in which a student seeks or intends to enroll federal, state, or local educational authorities conducting an audit, evaluation, or enforcement of federal or state-supported education programs. For example, the State Auditor's Office may have access to FERPA-protected information if it is auditing TEA's compliance with a state education program. Parents of an eligible student who is a dependent for income tax purposes. Pursuant to a lawfully issued court order or subpoena, FERPA has subpoena exceptions with different criteria. Please consult the confidentiality officer before releasing any documents in response to a subpoena. State and local officials serving a student under the juvenile justice system as established by state law. Organizations conducting studies for or on behalf of TEA. In connection with an imminent health or safety emergency. How can we be assured that we are doing everything we can to protect student information? Records may be publicly available by removing FERPA protected information. 
Redacting personally identifiable information is one way we can protect records when the specific identity of a student is not required in a release of information. Redaction is the process of obscuring text from a document prior to its release. Take a moment to review the example of poor redaction, which needs improvement. Yes, the text has been obscured. However, it is not very difficult to read the personally identifiable information. It is clear that Christopher Robin, who has a 512 area code phone number and a Hotmail email address, has written this letter on behalf of Winnie the Pooh. References to Winnie's gender and teachers are also visible. In this improved example, identical to the last copy, we have an example of proper redaction. The removal of personal information was done to adequately protect the student's identity. The letter could be from anyone and about any student. Therefore, the student is not identifiable. There are a number of ways you can be assured that you are adequately protecting student information. Here are the top 10 warnings for you to heed in order to increase the likelihood that student information is being adequately protected. Number one, don't give any student information over the phone. Because it is not possible to verify someone's identity over the phone, you cannot give a caller confidential information. You can simply direct the caller to our public information office. Once the right of access and verification is established, the public information office will send the requested information. Number two, don't let a subpoena deadline intimidate you into supplying confidential information. Subpoenas usually have a deadline and TEA's confidentiality officer in legal services can advise you. Number three, don't release student level information to another person unless you confirm that person's right of access and the person's identity has been verified. Number four, don't provide any student information until you have received approval by the confidentiality officer for its release. Number five, don't leave information accessible or unattended on a computer display. Information left on a computer screen should be treated the same as printed information. The medium in which the information is held is not important. Number six, don't publish a student's name or his or her personally identifiable information in reports, web directories, or databases. When drafting a report, refer to the student as, quote, student, unquote, rather than using the student's name. This helps prevent inadvertent disclosure of FERPA-protected information and makes any subsequent redaction process more efficient. Number seven, don't discuss a student's information with anyone who does not have a legitimate interest, such as an identifiable parent, an eligible student, or someone who has been authorized in writing to gain access. Number eight, don't divulge a student's information to anyone except an authorized TEA employee or other approved state employee. Even within TEA, access to student identifying information should be limited to only those individuals that require such access to perform their job duties. Number nine, don't leave student identifiable information where it is accessible to other individuals. And number 10, if you have any questions whatsoever about how to treat student identifiable information, do not hesitate to immediately contact the confidentiality officer. But what about PIA, the Texas Public Information Act, giving citizens the right to information about the affairs of government? You may be wondering, how does the release of protected information relate to the PIA? 
do not confuse the PIA with a right to access student education records. Education records are protected by FERPA and their privacy is not impacted by the Public Information Act. Generally, PIA provides that TEA cannot withhold information from the public without seeking a ruling from the Office of the Attorney General. The Office of the Attorney General does not have a right of access to FERPA information for PIA purposes, unless prior written consent is obtained. And any document sent to the OAG for a ruling in regard to a public information request must be redacted of all FERPA protected information. Therefore, TEA must redact all student identifying information from TEA records submitted to the OAG for ruling under the PIA. Failure to do so is a FERPA violation. FIPCO issued a ruling stating that the OAG cannot have access to FERPA protected information in the context of issuing rulings regarding the Public Information Act. Note that although the PIA requires the minimum amount of redaction to make the most information available to the public, FERPA is the opposite. We may redact all the information that is necessary to protect a student's identifying information. Remember, as a user of student information, it is your responsibility to protect the confidentiality of their records. You can take measures to protect against unauthorized access to student data stored on a personal computer, a disk, a network, or any other storage media. Here's how. First, review and become familiar with appropriate agency operating procedures, those regarding the release of information to the public under the PIA, regarding confidential information and use of social security numbers, Procedures about information resources access, security controls, messaging policy, and data requests. Use passwords on files and CDs and be sure to send passwords in separate communications. Save documents in a manner in which the recipient cannot undo your electronic redactions. Seek IT assistance or training or risk having someone undo your electronic redaction. When sending student information in an email, be sure to set the sensitivity level to confidential in your message options. Additionally, do not include student identifiable information in the subject line of the email. If you are stepping away for just a moment or you have a visitor, you can minimize your screen. When you leave your desk for breaks, lunch, and at the end of the day, be sure you log off entirely. Keep student information in a secure locked location. We'll conclude our conversation with a discussion of FERPA enforcement. Sometimes there's an allegation that an institution or agency has violated FERPA. A parent or eligible student may file a written complaint with FIPCO regarding an alleged FERPA violation. FIPCO investigates timely complaints or may even conduct its own investigation when no complaint has actually been filed. If found non-compliant, a notice of findings would be issued with a statement of steps the agency must take to comply within a reasonable period of time. If the education agency or institution does not comply after notice and time period, the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Education may withhold further payments under any applicable program, issue a cease and desist order, or terminate eligibility to receive funding under any applicable program. To this date, the U.S. Department of Education has never withheld or terminated funding based on FERPA violations. And we don't want TEA to be the first. For further information related to FERPA, 
direct your questions to TEA's Confidentiality Officer in the Legal Services Division at 512-463-9720. To answer questions about how to respond to public information requests, contact the Texas Education Agency at 512-463-9734 and ask for the Public Information Office. Remember, when in doubt, don't give it out. Thank you.